Hello and welcome to SPCR's YouTube channel. Today I have the pleasure of presenting one of our recent projects to you. This project is called Hexamesh and it is an arrangement for chiplets in 2.5D stacked chips that maximizes the performance of the interchiplet interconnect. Let's start with some background on 2.5D integration. In a monolithic chip, we have a single piece of silicon that is enclosed in its own package. All of our compute cores are within the single silicon die. Then talking about 2.5D integration, we can differentiate between different flavors. We can do 2.5D integration using an organic package substrate. Here we have multiple silicon dies called chiplets that are in the same package. And to connect different chiplets, we use links that go through the package substrate. Here, in order to go from a chiplet to the package substrate, we need to go through C4 bumps. And these bumps are the limiting factor for the bandwidth of this link. To fight this bottleneck, we have also 2.5D integration using a silicon interposer. This is a piece of silicon that goes between the chiplets and the package substrate. And this time, the chiplets are attached to the silicon interposer using micro bumps. Since these micro bumps have a smaller pitch than C4 bumps, we can now build chiplet to chiplet links with a higher bandwidth. However, even if we use the silicon interposer, the link bandwidth is still a lot more limited than in the monolithic case. So we have already seen one disadvantage of 2.5D integration. So why do we even care about it? Well, 2.5D integration comes with a lot of economical benefits. On one hand, we have heterogeneity. This means that we can integrate different chiplets that are fabricated in different technology nodes into the same package. Furthermore, we can reuse a single chiplet design in multiple chips. Then we have improved yield because chiplets are usually much smaller than monolithic chips, and we can perform per chiplet frequency and power binning. However, we also have some drawbacks. Chiplet designs come with some area and power overheads due to size, and as already mentioned, due to the limited number of bumps, the interchiplet interconnect is the bottleneck. And in our project, we wanted to fight this bottleneck by maximizing the performance of the interchiplet interconnect. At the beginning of our project, we had some key insights. Since the number of bumps is limited, the number and also the data width of links is limited. And therefore, we want to maximize the link throughput. To do this, we need to maximize the link frequency. However, to run links at high frequencies without introducing unacceptable bit error rates, we need to minimize their length. And minimizing the link length basically means that we can only connect adjacent chiplets. In our project, we assume that adjacent chiplets are always chiplets that share a common edge, like here in this example. We could also discuss chiplets that share a common corner. However, if they only share a common corner, the link length is significantly increased compared to the other case. So for our work, we assumed that this counts as adjacent, but this does not. So since we can only connect adjacent chiplets, we now have the situation where the shape and arrangement of chiplets are very important for the performance of the interchiplet interconnect. This is because shape and arrangement of chiplets basically dictates the topology of the interchiplet interconnect. So let's formulate a clear problem statement. In our work, we want to optimize the shape and arrangement of chiplets such that we minimize the network diameter, which we have as a proxy for the latency, and we maximize the bisection bandwidth, which we have as a proxy for the throughput. We also have some constraints. We are only interested in arrangements where the chiplets all have the same shape. This is because manufacturing chiplets with the same functionality, but different shapes, would increase the design and manufacturing complexity. And all chiplets must be rectangular. This is because all of the design tools and manufacturing pipelines are laid out for rectangular chiplets. So let's try to optimize the chiplet arrangement. A very straightforward way would be to arrange 
triplets in a 2D grid. This, as noted, is straightforward. However, each triplet has at most four neighbors. Intuitively speaking, if we would have more neighbors per triplet, then we would have a lower network diameter and a higher bisection bandwidth. So let's try to maximize the number of neighbors per triplet. We could do this by having hexagonal triplets that are arranged in a honeycomb pattern. Here, we have up to six neighbors per triplet, which as we have proven in our paper, is asymptotically optimal. However, here we have to deal with non-rectangular triplets, which are hard to design and to manufacture. What we can do instead is arranging rectangular triplets in a brick wall pattern. Here, we have exactly the same logical connectivity as in the honeycomb, which means that we have the same asymptotically optimal number of neighbors per triplet, but we have the advantage of rectangular triplets that are easy to design and manufacture. In this brick wall arrangement, we still have one small drawback. As you can see, the triplet to the top left and to the bottom right only have two neighbors. And intuitively, having more neighbors per triplet would increase their connectivity. So what we can do is we can arrange triplets in a hexa mesh arrangement. This is actually our proposal for how to arrange triplets in such a scenario. In a hexa mesh, each triplet has at least three neighbors. All the non-border triplets have six neighbors, and the hexa mesh has the lowest network diameter of all arrangements considered. Now that we have introduced our arrangements, we would like to compare them. However, not all of these arrangements are applicable for the same triplet counts. A grid arrangement, for example, is only applicable if we have a square number of triplets, and also for the hexa mesh, only certain triplet counts lead to a regular arrangement. To deal with this problem, we introduce irregular arrangements. So here you can see examples of regular grid, brick wall, and hexa mesh arrangements. If we now have a triplet count, that leads to an irregular arrangement, we simply add the additional triplets on the side, something like this. For the brick wall arrangement, we do exactly the same, but here we make sure that the order in which we add these additional triplets ensures that the additional triplet always has at least two neighbors. And for the hexa mesh arrangement, we do exactly the same. We add these additional triplets in a manner such that the additional triplet never has only a single neighbor. Now, this, now, now that this applicability issue is out of the way, let's compare our arrangements. We compare them in terms of network diameter and bisection bandwidth. Here you can see the network diameter on the y-axis versus the number of triplets on the x-axis. The grid arrangement that is depicted in blue has the highest network diameter. By going from a grid to a brick wall arrangement, here in green, we can reduce the network diameter. And by going to a hexa mesh arrangement, the diameter is further reduced. So this looks pretty good. But what about the bisection bandwidth? On this plot, you can see the bisection bandwidth on the y-axis and the number of triplets on the x-axis. Here we can see that the grid arrangement in blue has the lowest bisection bandwidth. The brick wall arrangement in green has a significantly higher bisection bandwidth. And by going from a brick wall to a hexa mesh in red, we can further boost the bisection bandwidth of the arrangement. So also this is looking very well. However, this theoretical analysis has one big drawback. Let's think back at the motivational slide in the beginning. There we noticed that the bandwidth of these die to die links are limited by the number of bumps. So let's now have a look at the floor plan of a triplet out of the grid arrangement, and let's see how we assign the different bumps. The bumps in the center of the triplet are usually used for the power supply, and the bumps on the sides are used for the links. Here, in terms of the grid arrangement, we have four links per triplet, therefore we need four sectors of bumps, one for each link. If we now compare this with a triplet for the brick wall or hexa mesh arrangement, then we can see 
that for those two arrangements, we have up to six links per triplet. Therefore, we need six sectors of bumps for links. And therefore, the single sectors that are available for a given link are smaller. This means that in the brick wall and hexa mesh case, the link bandwidth of a single link would be smaller. So what we actually need to do is we need to compute the per link bandwidth based on the number of available bumps and incorporate this into our analysis. We did this and we combined this with cycle accurate simulation using the book sim simulator. And here we now analyze the average packet latency as well as the saturation throughput of our network. In this plot, you see the latency on the y-axis and the number of triplets on the x-axis. The grid arrangement depicted in blue has the highest latency, and both the brick wall and the hexa mesh arrangement provide significantly lower latency than the grid arrangement. Let's also have a look at the saturation throughput. Here we see the throughput on the y-axis, which has a lot of logarithmical scale, and we see the number of triplets on the x-axis. Now this throughput plot looks very messy. This is because we use a lot of irregular arrangements and the throughput of irregular arrangements is quite noisy. However, we can still identify some trends. So the general trend is that the grid in blue has the lowest throughput, then the brick wall in green has slightly higher throughput than the grid, and the hexa mesh in red seems to provide the highest throughput. However, the saturation throughput plot with the logarithmical y-axis and all of the noise is still quite hard to read. So what we can do to make it more readable is to assume that the grid is our baseline and therefore we set for each given triplet count the throughput and latency of a grid arrangement to 100%. Then we can express the latency and throughput of the brick wall and hexa arrangement as percentage of the grid arrangement. This looks something like this. In terms of latency, we can see that compared to a grid arrangement, the brick wall reduces the latency to 82% on average, and the hexa mesh reduces the latency to 81% on average. In terms of throughput, going from a grid arrangement to a brick wall arrangement increases the throughput to 112%, and going from a brick wall to hexa mesh arrangement increases the throughput to 134%. So let's come to a conclusion. We have proposed the hexa mesh arrangement to arrange triplets in 2.5D stack chips. Our theoretical analysis have shown that by doing this, we reduce the network diameter and we increase the bisection bandwidth. On top of this theoretical analysis, we also perform simulations. And based on our simulations, we saw that on average, we reduce the latency by 19% and we increase the throughput by 34%. And finally, going from a grid arrangement to a hexa mesh arrangement does not increase the design and manufacturing complexity since we all only use uniform and rectangular triplets. So if you would like to know more about our lab and other projects, feel free to continue browsing our YouTube channel. If you would like to stay up to date with our lab, consider visiting our Twitter page. And if you want to have a look at different code bases of other projects or of this one, then visit our GitHub.